Oh, Young. Are you really telling me that Atari VCS console is an OUYA level scam? Nah, it's not. At least I can say that OUYA was a console that was comparable to its mobile counterparts. This thing is not even comparable to that. This thing is comparable to a set-top box. And wow, this $400 spent on a set-top box is one hell of a set-top box. This is a luxury item if I have to consider it in the category of set-top boxes. But why is that? Why am I saying Atari VCS not as a console, but rather a set-top box? The answer actually lies in his video. Well, in a part, let me just go to this part. Yeah. And let me just go a bit. Yeah. This is the part that I'm talking about. Atari VCS, in bracket, in parentheses, this is a name which is very odd to me. This is R1606G. I never heard of this thing, honestly. I never heard of this thing until now. And what I discovered is laughable. It's laughable to say the least. This is in fact an AMD Ryzen embedded R1000 series. <laughs> oh boy. So in case if you do not know, AMD has recently released I mean, almost two years ago, two or three years ago, they have released their embedded R1000 series, which was embedded to, which was intended, in fact, it is intended as a step up of your Raspberry Pis. You know, if you want to make an embedded system using an ARM processor, but you want something more powerful than that, but something less powerful than, say, an entry level notebook, this thing can work for you. And because of this, it is intended for something like Casino gaming, IOTs, aerospace stuff, I don't exactly know how, but it will be used for radar equipment or maybe uh, adjusting lighting conditions in plane. Maybe if you want to go for making your own small stream bo streaming box, yeah, it can work. Maybe your own mini server. In that case, it will work. But is it going to be working as a full-fledged console? Absolutely not. Because this thing is not even capable of that. This thing is running on RX on Radeon Vega 3. In 2017, in 2017, this is running on Radeon Vega 3 graphics, which is not really powerful if you consider that just how far Radeon and AMD Ryzen series has gone till now. Okay. The one I'm using right now, the laptop I'm using, is a Lenovo IdeaPad. It's Lenovo Idea Pair 33015 ARR and it is powered by Ryzen 5 2500U. Let me just show you with my NeoFetch. So as you can see from this NeoFetch, this is running indeed a customized version of Gen2 Linux and it is a Lenovo Idea Pair 33015 ARR. This is mostly, you know, that entry level ThinkPad. If you want to go on a wannabe level, if you want to own a ThinkPad, but you don't have enough budget like I had, you can go for this thing, and it's absolutely wonderful. I have been using this for almost a year, and I use exclusively Linux on this thing. I never, I installed Windows for this thing, like for a few days, and then I just wiped off that partition and reinstalled Linux on it. And I got this thing without Linux. I specifically ordered this with free DOS, and it costed me... 28,000 Indian rupees, which if we convert this from INR to USD, let's see what we can get right now. It will be 372 US dollars. 372 US dollars including import duty that I have paid to get this thing imported to India. Now, if I can pay for something that is really that cheap i mean this thing is already running on a customized linux version and i'm able to get a lot more bang for my buck i mean i'm getting a lot more stuff out of this thing and undoubtedly this thing is just freaking amazing ryzen 5 2500u is a big step up despite the fact that it is an integrated graphics 
uh, processing unit. It's surprising that just how this thing can work. And now let's actually go back to uh, Atari's own media article. Medium article, sorry, it's not media article. So this one came somewhere in March 2019, where they say that they are going for an APU upgrade. And they said that they will be using R1606G chip. AMD's all new Ryzen embedded R1606 chip will be faster, cooler, more efficient allowing VCS to benefit from a simpler, more effective power architecture and thermal solution. The new processor includes built-in Ethernet, native 4K video with modern HTCP, and a secure frame buffer that fully supports DRM video like Netflix and HBO. Uh, overall speaking, this thing will do what, what will be considered as a bare bones or maybe a slight step up of your streaming of your setup boxes that I actually see on my for my local cable TV. This thing is a slight step up. In case if I want to convert my dumb TV into a smart TV, this thing can work. But if I want to make this thing work as a console, this sorry, it can't happen. I would be having a better chance making my uh, right idea pad work as one. Because let me show you. This thing is running already on Vega, uh, Radeon Vega 8. So let's actually compare this thing. I'm doing this right now because, you know what, if Atari is not going to put any effort to make the system really efficient and pack a lot of good stuff into it, I'm not gonna go for it as well. Let it be screwed. Let this go for with a very shitty presentation, okay? Let's compare our Radeon Vega 3 with Radeon Vega 8, the one that I'm using for my Ryzen processor. And if I compare this thing, Radeon, where is, let's see, where is Radeon Vega 8 on this thing? Oh, 267%. Boy, this just wrecks it bad. And keep in mind, I spent $370 on this thing. $370 on a full-fledged laptop, complete with screen, keyboard, and a trackpad. It, it's just baffling how much Atari was cutting costs to the point that it's not even viable. Now, let's go with the theoretical performance. As Yongi already pointed out, it's 4.2 it's 422 gigaflops. It's 0.4 teraflops. On the other hand, the one I'm using right now, it's 1.126 teraflops. Let me just compare this with PlayStation 4's GPU. Let's really compare it. Let's let's see where it can go. 66% now I did not pay a lot on this thing and this is not this is not an you know a big yeah it's just 66% but since I actually paid for something that is even cheaper than PlayStation 4 it costs around 40 to 50 thousand in India this thing what I'm paying for it's slightly less powerful than a PlayStation 4 but it does its job a lot better um, just a side note everybody, I just said that it was 40,000, but it was 40,000 at the time it was launched. Right now it's costing at 28,000 rupees, according to Amazon, at the time of recording this thing. So yeah, you can buy, technically, a PS4 for the same price as I bought for what I paid for my IdeaPad. Uh, but considering that this is a 7 year old console and the new 9th gen is coming up i think this is going to this is already obsolete in every way but what playstation what sony has done for playstation it is absolutely commendable not only they already have not only they have made a really powerful psd based operating system that frees a lot of ram on it but they uh, but with amd they have made it really powerful GPU that can actually put Vega 8 run for its money, you know. 
it actually competes with this Ryzen 5. And that's commendable, man. That, that is really commendable. It has 1.8 teraflops on half and full performance. On the other hand, Vega 8 just wrecks it in half perf in just half level. In the FP16 performance, this thing just doubles up pretty high. Now you may consider that maybe it's because Sony wants to make something that can work consistently across different systems. So if they are going with the half level, they can incorporate a lot more shaders and with you know the simple float performance, they can get it um, much more performance out of it. They just want to keep it as consistent as possible. So maybe I can I think they are just going on this one to one half performance ratio while Vega 8 just goes 2 to 1 a half performance ratio. But in either way, it is slightly less powerful than a PlayStation 4. And I have paid almost half the price if I uh, take off the import duty because This thing is still wrecking a $400 setup. I mean, let's go full on. Let's go full on with this thing. Let's go with this $400. Let's see what I can pack up with $400. I can actually go with my complete setup. The mic that I'm using is a Samsung Go mic. I paid $4,000 for this thing. So let's put $28 with $4. It's going to be around $32. ludicrous this is practically ludicrous when it comes down to price point maybe I'm just a stingy Indian who is going on a penny pinching spree but let's be honest about it if you are paying $400 if you are paying a premium price for something that is really lackluster it just goes to show how much it just goes to show how much Atari is going to rake in profits out of this thing which is largely a step up from your set of boxes this is absolutely unacceptable how the hell people are even believing in it i mean if you are defending this thing please stop it get some help that's all i can say uh it's me up and from pixel trick and i'm signing out